Hi, this is Can You See My Screen, a podcast dedicated to running better workshops, training and meetings online. I'm Michael Forrest and I do a lot of video production, live streaming and software development. I'm Ivanka Magic and I do user research, so I do a lot of talking to people. I do workshops, courses and presentations and with so much of our work having to happen online at the moment, uh, we think that we can help things be easier and better for all of us. So much better! Um, today we're going to talk about icebreakers for online workshops. That sounds um, like something, doesn't it? Um, it does. <laughs> this is more, I think, Ivanka's field. I'm a sort of solo, do everything on my own, but Ivanka does a lot of these things. So I do. she's going to tell me all about it after the titles. Try to find out. We're going to try to find how to get connected. Um, <laughs> so uh, don't icebreakers just, aren't they just awful and they suck? And aren't they just make lame and make you, everyone feel like, oh my God, <laughs> creepy. Uh, no, uh, they're really, it depends uh, really on what you're trying to do. Uh, and I think the reason they're important in something I use, we, we bandy around the word workshop quite a lot, mm. but it applies to most meetings and things any getting together where there is an objective or an outcome or something that means that the people that have been invited to it their participation will contribute to something so your absolute goal at the beginning is that you've got to get everyone contributing it's not like right. i'm going to stand up and lecture you all in that mm. context we don't need any kind of icebreaker it's like shut up listen i'm here now whatever you know it's probably in your interest as the person presenting to sort of check in with everybody make sure they're all ready or do something that allows everyone to mentally arrive mm -hmm. um because you know i do think these days we're missing that walking into the venue bit that helps us do that uh, but that's not the same and as having an icebreaker mm. which is so Ooh, mentally, always yeah. So mentally arriving. What do you mean by by that? I mean like you know, I was I was here. I was replying to my email. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, I've got the tab open. Oh, the lecture started. Right. Uh, that's not giving me. I you know I've not arrived. I'm still sending that still email or probably finishing elsewhere. it off. or just got a little eye on my Slack or whatever it might be. Yeah. So creating that moment of. Hello, everybody. Are we all here? Um, I mean, they do it at the beginning the of a yoga class, don't they? They're sort right. of like, and sit know. on your mat, take a deep <laughs> breath. Oh, and that doesn't matter if you're online or offline, but yeah. Mm. So, and that's distinct from now, right? Everyone, everyone's here. Everyone's present. Everyone's turned off their, you know, put their phone in focus mode. And now we're going to break the ice. Um, yes, I suppose, and I suppose there's different levels of call, right? So, so what what are we going to start? Like, so, what's the most common one for you to be involved in? Would you say breaking the? What ice? do you mean level? Like, there's there's one to one conversations. There's group uh, like three or four people. There's yeah, you running a workshop. There's thirty people in there, or there's you know, there's a yeah, I think panel maybe of you know six people and then an audience. So, like, what sort of thing are we talking about? I think we're in a one-to-one, -one, the icebreaker is just the hello, how are you kind yeah. of a interaction. I think we're talking about, a work, I don't think we're talking about a panel because mm -hmm. only the panel needs to break the, you know, the, there is, if there is a panel, speak. there is also an interview. They've got to break the ice amongst themselves. We're just mm -hmm. listening. Um, but then if you've got, you know, anything more than three or four people, I'd right. say, you might not, if we're three or four, you might not need, you might, it might be enough to go, does everyone know each other? Right. Um, but let's just do, because it's so easy to forget that. Can you just yeah. say your name for the, you know, and what you actually do or which organization you're from or blah, blah. Um, and then if it's more than that, especially if you know you're going to have some organized planned activities, like for a workshop, you might be thinking something, you know, I don't know, coming up with some ideas or getting some feedback about something. You need people to be feeling that they can actively participate. And an icebreaker is a really important way, a really good way to get people to 
practice their voice in the right. setting uh, because it, it need, it's designed really to level people and to mm. go, right, everybody's allowed to speak. This is how we're going to speak. We're going to test it out on something where none of, none of us need to worry about saying yeah. like, you know, and then, and then, so we're not creating any judgment. We're creating a level fa- playing field. And then from then on, hopefully, as a moderator, it serves two purposes. One, hopefully you get everyone active in your icebreaker. But if you don't, you also have your eye on the people who are more hesitant to participate. Right, so right. you're already knowing that you can go, oh, that person was a bit shy. Or they spoke very quietly or whatever they did. That may- means that you then can go, so, Michael, just check, you know, we're do- we've done this ideas thing. Yeah. Have you got anything to add? Was there anything you'd like to say? Or, you know, I've no idea what, ah, pick on you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, I think so, it's, uh, it's, it sounds lame, but it's really <laughs> important. So it's to get people to sort of practice talking. And in that sense, I was going to ask, like, if everyone already knows each other, you would still do this because it's not you're breaking the ice of that, those relationships. You're breaking the ice of this is the workshop. This workshop. Make sure everyone yeah. has practiced saying something so that, that it's not like that, that, that's terrifying thing of, I, I don't want to, the first thing, I've got a point to make, but I don't want to say it going, uh, <laughs> my voice isn't going to be like that. is it is it time am i loud am I how am loud? i doing it and and you know we don't when i say i say using your voice but it could be also you know let's practice a tool so if we're mm. you if we're going to be using a post-it noting tool for the activity for, for our workshop especially an online one you want to you know, you may you may want to ask everybody to do the icebreaker via that tool. So, right. uh, you know, I've often been in 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 workshops where, and I've I've used this as well. Sort of upload like where you would like to go on holiday when we're all allowed out again. Well, you know, that was certainly a a COVID thing. Where 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 would you like to go, or yeah. where have you been recently, or something that? So you have to upload a picture into right. the tool. So it sort of practices the tool and gets a conversation right. going. And, and, and so, so, so any way that you want your the the group to engage with the problem or the, the outcome, then that's that's going to be part of the icebreaker, probably. So, should we have some? Yeah. Uh, do you want to tell us some then? Uh, <laughs> here's some. <laughs> here's some. I mean, I will I will plug someone else's link for this okay. as well because there's a there's a woman called Emily Weber who I've worked with variously. She's she's written she's got a good post blog post about it on her website and she does a lot of community stuff oh sorry agile community engagement online that kind of she she's talks about how to get people to talk to each other um and so her she's got a nice blog post with a few good examples which i would definitely recommend um but you know i i i think the for me the most the the important things i've done i've done this in physical workshops as well Hmm. it's like what did you have for breakfast which what's your name what's your organization and what did you have for breakfast? And I've done this where there's been 30 people, for right. big numbers of people, because you have to go like, you know, we're all here together. Um, and then you can have a bit of a laugh later. You know, you, there is always a little bit of the back of this happens to me. It's like, I don't want to ask somebody that might make something that might make someone uncomfortable. Yeah. That's the most, so like, what are your best dreams? I was in a workshop recently, well, not me, it's probably a year ago, when somebody, she, the way that she phrased it was like, what context are you bringing? The, she, the moderator. Mm. And I was like, she wanted you to, what she was asking for us to do is to sort of describe our mental state, like what's happening in your life that you're bringing to this meeting. Mm. And my cousin had just died. Right. And I was like, I'm not going to tell you what's happening in my mental state right now because it's just going to bring everybody down. But I'm very happy to tell you whether or not I prefer tea or coffee. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like you really do have to be. Uh, and I, I used the tea and coffee one recently on a on a workshop I was moderating because we kept getting randomly. It was like a it was a Zoom thing, and people would assign you, and you'd bang, uh, bang into a room, no idea who was coming eight right. people i'm the moderator hello right before we start who, tell us your name tell us what organization you're from and what do you reckon tea or coffee mm. and then everyone then it was a bit of like haha i like my coffee like okay. this i'm not I don't know. but then so you know it's just it's got to be something that is 
really unlikely to offend yeah and it's i think there's a certain like what you know what did you do today is a lot easier question to ask yeah. than what are you doing with your life but if, yeah like, but what i'm thinking is like <laughs> what i'm thinking is like do you like me you know um <laughs> yeah. You yeah, like yeah, yeah 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 um do you um do you think so if, say there's 30 people there's then just the logistics are you going to wait for everyone to pipe in or are you going to sort of like go through each person even if there's that many uh, I, I, I've 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 done the I've done both ways. So I'm not going to waste waste. That's a that's a Freudian slip. If everyone was one, I'm not going to spend thirty minutes doing a warm up or a icebreaker if my workshop's only going to last an hour and a half. Yeah, I've got to somehow shortcut that. So. I probably would go for something post-it notey. Right. But let's say my example where I did 30 people and what did you all have for breakfast, I uh, did uh, I did take the time because I needed that. Like We've had this conversation about how to run an interview or something. The set, it's all in the setup. You've got to yeah. set the mood in the room. You've got to set your authority. You've got to set the... And I, I think following up in those circumstances, you can also add in a... Uh, let's give you know you can give some some people just one word they can say like tea or mm. coffee or whatever right. um, sh- and then maybe on just so it's quite fast i suppose i hadn't thought of that like uh breakfast is uh, you can get into their life story if you ask what they're yeah it's like breakfast but tea or coffee is like two syllables maximum yeah yeah maybe yeah three oh, if it's neither what <laughs> yeah yeah so it's like but you know getting into breakfast then you got the person who didn't have any breakfast and oh my god you know it's like oh did they have not have breakfast because they could afford breakfast or because they do you know what I mean you know it's like so it's, it's very easy to... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like uh so yeah so there's kind of uh uh there is an efficiency but there is a, a real importance to um I think taking the uh, and and I think how much weight you give that activity will will um will depend on how in how much time you have how important every individual's participation is um how important it is to war is it going to be a lot of discussion because if it's got a going to be a lot of discussion you've got to warm the room up you've got to get everyone talking to each other um so i think like uh the the you know but it, it, i think it's very easy for them to, for them to be very lame you know mm. i think it with our online ones um i've seen some really uh there's there's some good ones where you make you make people get up right. so sort of like because that's useful as well sometimes they've been sitting at their on the subject of helping people to mentally arrive yeah in the warm up to say go and find something yellow go and find a fridge magnet go and you know this is both of those are emily webber examples but it's like uh, i've been um uh i think i've been asked to go and find something yellow before uh, right. and then again you know but it's 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 a but it's a yeah but but it's a get up move around which is good and i saw another one which i may or may not have talked to you about where everybody has to z- get as far far enough back from their screen so their hands are touching the edge of the square Uh, you know so i've got my wrong hand (laughs) i can't do it (laughs) but you know (laughs) so so those kind of things are are quite this just to get everyone have a laugh but hopefully you get some luck that's really it's like and and uh so yeah i i think that um so we're going to go Emily Webber oh, for good. a list. I go. Yeah, I, I suppose, Emily Webber's got a good list. I suppose you've got. I suppose once you've been doing it a while, you've got your go-to's. So you sort of like probably yeah. you've got. I'm going to do the whiteboard thing. I'm going to do the the thing. Yeah, I yeah. Know this works. I've done a fifty of these workshops now. That's what works. Yeah. So I suppose this is almost like a do's and don'ts um, yeah. session as much as anything else. But also, like maybe we can talk about what what is the difference between the online and the, the offline. Like, is there any more that you can go into there? Uh, stuff that works online that doesn't work and vice versa. Um, uh, so well, I think you've got to be... The Zoom high five is... You just yeah. <laughs> so, high five. I've never... I don't... I cannot recall... what Because what you just said, like, yes, I have a few. I do breakfast. I do tea and coffee. I do... Um, how did you get here? I do... You know, stuff... Uh, you know, I, I, I w- w- won't necessarily spend a lot of time inventing 
there's no benefit to inventing a new icebreaker if you know an icebreaker. So you're like, that's not why I'm going to put all my energy into the workshop and what that's going to be about. What I might be thinking about is the appropriateness. I will often throw in a, what do you hope to get out of today? Right. Right. Because then I'll, especially if I'm running a training course, like what, what's, what, what questions have you come with so that I can gather them, put them somewhere like as part of my kickoff for my workshop or my training course and then go back to them and say, oh, I, I see a lot of you are very interested in, well, I don't know, how to how to start, how to do icebreakers. Um, <laughs> right. So yes, we're definitely covering that today, but what we won't be covering is speed dating tips. I don't know, do you know what I mean? So it's like, uh, so so it helps me understand the, the who, who's in the room and what they're actually trying to find yeah. out. So but that... Yeah, that, so I guess that, you'd be capturing that, like if it's an online thing, there's a bit more scope for capturing a little bit of information about someone ahead of time and, and maybe just have a look and see if there's anything that inspires you for the day that sort of takes it beyond a, maybe a superficial, I'm going to just practice my voice into maybe something that actually helps to sort of move the workshop shape. forward straight away. Yeah, and I yeah. suppose that would be a much a, a more efficient use of time still if you can. You know, well, and I think it depends on the participants, you know, mm. like... Well, I think I'd, I can't remember if I've talked about this before, you know, but there's there are there are culturally appropriate questions as well. And right. culture doesn't just mean like what's your favorite alcohol to a, yeah, right. a group of people who don't drink alcohol. Yeah. It's more also like certain cultures in a professional setting wouldn't expect to be asked what they had for breakfast. Yeah. And they would feel very uncomfortable being asked yeah. that. But if you ask them what they what their main question from the day is or what they they hope to do net or something more connected to the to the content um they'll be comfortable and more or, or just simply asking them to introduce with their job title or their you know something that's more formal so you have to you have to be aware of those yeah. uh, nuances as well i mean i'm quite i do go very uh what's the you know i i am i i don't I don't take myself ter- too seriously in mm. terms of my professional presentation, but I have to acknowledge that other people do. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? So I'm, I'm happy to go, Oh, I couldn't survive without my five coffees in the morning for us or whatever, you know, like, but, but yeah, some there's people that don't personal want to. boundaries that, that may, may, yeah. may not be, especially if you're in a severance based workplace where no one can remember what they did before work or after work. They're just in work. Oh, there's an Apple TV show that's on. I just think they're just at work perpetually. <laughs> oh my god, isn't that but yes, isn't that life? Um, well, yeah. So, so, yeah. so I. So yeah, I think definitely that... yeah. So, but, but how would you? How would you? Um, yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I think the physical, the offline versus online. Yeah. Really, the the difference is what you do like you can't do a go and find something yellow in most offices um you know and and plus physically everyone's walked into the room so you don't need them to stand up and shake about and do something but you might ask that well i personally don't have never felt the urge to get people to do press-ups or lunges i know uh but you know it's like uh, but you've got this difference of being holding the focus of the room so i will almost always in that physical workshop in you know have a flip chart as people are talking to me I might ask them to write on the post-its or I might write them as they're telling me and put them up but they but you're you're doing more than getting them to participate you're showing them physically where where the focus is in the room and yeah. like this is where we're looking now and look I have heard you I have listened to what you hope to get out of today. Look, it's there. We're going to talk about it, yeah. which in a in an online is diff, is different more because you've got to take people to a tool and we are looking together at this tool. Yeah. I am not showing you. So, so it's it's nuanced I think, differences, I think, I think. But there's absolutely nothing like a post-it note situation in real life, is there? Because if it's a whiteboard, no one wants to like make a mark on that board. But if you've just got your post-it note and you're just sticking them up, there's it's so um so low friction to be able to do that and in a way the digital tools are are, are, are sort of more akin to that than maybe like a whiteboard or uh yeah something else so so there's probably a lot of benefits are there sort of um like other than you know you talked about the whiteboarding thing where you can stick 
like pictures on it what, and draw on it yeah. presumably and add notes and things what and are there any other sorry there are little post-it things that you can right do. right right are, are there any other types of tools that might kind of key into this that you would use um, normally i i have not you i've i've nicked one of somebody that i'm going to try in my next workshop i haven't yeah. done it yet i think it's a good idea it's like a landscape uh so it's a picture and as the as part of your warm up and get to know the tool you've got to like go to this station on this picture and um create a post it and then you've got to go to the next one and it's like a little journey you've got to do right. for your for your for your warm up for the for it, this was one we did um i think it was for a retro for a retrospective for a project so it was right. part of the content but it was kind of fun right and so you know it, it, having these fun activities sometimes sometimes it can trivialize it and you do have to read the room and try stuff out and sometimes it won't work but there's like a uh, sometimes if you're going to have to talk about something a bit difficult like a retrospective for a project where mm. maybe I've got to tell people that I really didn't like this bit or they've got yeah. to tell me that I didn't deliver or whatever you know right. having a um, an activity where you can have a bit of fun lightens the mood yeah. a little bit and can make it easier to go you know like somebody I was having a pep talk from a friend this week she went she was talking about something I'd written and she went I didn't love that bit <laughs> that's yes. like, you know, which is like a okay thank you <laughs> but you know it's that difference between say i didn't love it versus i hated it is yeah. like a, you know it means the well, same yeah. thing but get get but the yeah. connections going first get people relaxed yeah. however it needs to be done so um yeah, yeah i think that's uh that's it's good on icebreakers unless you've got any more points we can direct people to the website and stuff no, I think I'm. Uh, I'm all. Uh, I, I think. I, yeah. No. It's a small topic. <laughs> I don't know, mumble. You know, it's. You know. I think. It, but I think it's an important topic. Yeah. And I think. Oh, I did actually. There was one okay. thing that yeah. you reminded me of with the post-it notes and in the in real life. Yeah. It's been such a long time since I've done it. I've yeah. forgotten. But I have a slide called post-it husbandry uh, that yes. I present up to people because you know post workshop you want to take photos of the post-its. So I have this like so part of their what they had for breakfast or tag or something that they have to come up with will be asking people to use a Sharpie, write in block capitals, choose the colour for something, whatever. Tear so you kind of this way. <laughs> so you get See, some I've training. Been to one of Ivanka's things. Do not tear the post it <laughs> this way. This way. <laughs> this way. Uh, but yeah, so it's those kind of things that just yeah. kind of just you know, it's a little bit of a and people, you know, it's not it's not uh it's often the little icebreaker bit that people will be like the post it husbandry lives on uh, <laughs> without me. Um so uh, as do all to... my amazing workshops that I've run, but uh, yeah, the the like you can make it something that brings everybody a little bit together. They can have a joke about later yeah. at, in the pub for the drinks after. Yeah, That's so it's a sort of to. personal branding opportunity as well. You know, if you're into that it sort of thing, if you you're can do that. it. Yes. Okay. Cool. Well, um, if this is a, I, I, I'm not, I can't remember how we end this one, but I think I just say, come to, um, if you like this, uh, we've got more episodes. Uh, come to uh, can you see my screen podcast.com. And uh, yeah, there's links and information, and full video episodes. Uh, you can get this on your podcast app. You can get this on YouTube um, and, uh, you know, on the internet. Uh, so if you want to come and find and ask us questions and tell us a bit about yourself, just come to our website and um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Um, so yeah, let's uh, say goodbye. See you next time. <laughs> bye. 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 bye.